to my homemade barrel sauna. It's 43 degrees below zero. 43 degrees below zero Celsius right now. It's bloody cold. We're going through a polar vortex and I'm sitting in a sauna in my backyard. Just loving this, loving the heat. Um, stay tuned. This is going to be uh, probably one of the longest videos out there right now on this subject of building your own barrel sauna. Uh, you can use what you learn here in building regular saunas too. Um, watch the video and make sure you like and subscribe because uh, in a week or two time I'm going to put out um, kind of a commentary video. Um, things to do, things to look out for, uh, parts to buy, the absolute minimum of tools that you're going to need to build this um, so you can do this successfully and I urge you watch the whole video watch this whole video if you want a sauna for yourself especially a barrel sauna they're beautiful um, they hold the heat well and you don't have to use expensive cedar I'm using stud wood here this is a this is two by six stud wood um, I did uh, make a bench out of cedar just because um, I want a little bit of cedar in here my wife did um, but watch this video because if you're going to drop a couple grand on you know, materials, maybe buy new um, tools and stuff to do this project, um, you want to you want to be ready to do this. Not like me, where um, I've had issues, I've ran into problems that I had to solve, and that I solved them for you. So watch this video, start to finish. If uh, you know if you're going to look at making the investment in the materials and tools. Make the investment in time to watch this video. I ramble on a lot, but there are jewels of information here. They're gonna save you time and maybe even save you some money. Anyhow, on with this. And like I said, don't forget to like and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe, because I am gonna do a commentary on here. I'm gonna um, rehash everything, every hurdle that I had to jump, every decision, that sort of thing, tools, that sort of thing. Um, and you don't want to miss that. Because if, if you're planning on doing a sauna, um, you're going to want to watch that as well. If you just want to see what I'm doing here, you know, by all means, uh, fast forward through it, skip it till you see cool parts and that. But if you are interested in having a sauna for you or for your friends or your family, um, and share the video too. Share it with people that might want to build one for themselves. Um, right now, with uh, a lot of countries having their saunas closed and everything, um, now's the time to build it. You can save a lot of money building it yourself. And I show you how to. And then I'm going to talk about it later. So like, subscribe, share, and uh, that's my spiel. Thanks for watching. On with this video. What's up everybody? It's Wayne Stevenson. Wow. What's up? This is the last of it. 100 pieces of 2x6 studs. What's up everybody, it's Wayne Stevenson here. In this video, I am gonna be building a sauna, barrel sauna. Anyhow, stay tuned, I gotta drop this. Well guys, there you have it. Right there, 100 pieces. I'm not gonna need them all, but that's 100 pieces of, oh, I don't know, pine, spruce, fir. It's stud wood, two by six. I was gonna use cedar, very cost prohibitive. I don't know if you've ever priced out cedar. Um, at any rate, this stuff right here, um, from what I understand, is going to be just fine because in my research I found that back in the day when those fine Finnish, I believe, uh, maybe Danish, you know, Scandinavian countries, I don't know if that's the right term, I apologize if I offend anybody, at any rate, um, from what I understand, that is fine because back in the day they didn't have access to cedar, there was no cedar up there, up over there. But they did have spruce, pine, probably fir too. So that's what we're going with right here. So I spent yesterday and a little bit of today clearing ice and snow. Uh, oh, there's my solar panels. If you guys ever love alternative energy, ask me in the comments down below. I'll tell you all about them. I love talking clean energy, renewable energy, 
free energy. I love it. Um, at any rate, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, when I got time, I will talk a bit more about this project. So stay tuned. All right, it's a new day. I had to stop early yesterday because we hit some uh, some rain and snow. I don't like working in that. Uh, beautiful day today. We're uh, about two degrees Celsius. Should hit probably about a high of four degrees Celsius today. So it's a beautiful day to work. So I'm gonna hustle ass, get at her. Um, pull my poly off here because I had to tarp up yesterday. Uh, protect the snow so it didn't get on her. Protect the wood so it didn't get all wet. Anyhow, time to get started. So I've already dado this joint here. Um, I'm just using this board here to align them. I'm gonna run down this with the router using my edge guide. Extra weight on here to stop it from moving away. That way you don't need to clamp it or screw it. And this has turned out to be kind of my spoil board because as you can see it wanders as you're entering it. Once you get onto the edge completely with the guide, uh, then she'll follow straight down. I'm using this Freud one and a half inch bit so I can do it all in one swipe rather than going twice with a three quarter inch bit. Um, I'll leave a link to the, uh, the Amazon part down below so you can order it up yourself if you're interested. Otherwise you can use a three quarter inch, make a couple of uh, swipes, but uh, this is perfect. I'm using this on my old uh, Mastercraft Canadian tire router here. A little underpowered for the bit, so I just gotta take my time when it bogs down. I just gotta ease up a little bit, and uh, slow and steady wins the race. Half the width of the two by. There it is right there. Just go slow, take your time, get through it. You're gonna have an ugly one right at the start. Uh, it's not a problem because you can use that one for you know your ends. Uh, so you can cut that corner out as you're doing your uh, your back and your front for it. Um, probably a good idea to go over with a uh, palm sander or something just to uh, round those edges out so that uh, when you're banging them in they'll go in a little easier. Um, other than that, I gotta do 50 of those. Um, sorry, 51. And that is 13 of them done so far. So I just gotta do this a few times. And then I can start uh, rotating the, uh, the edges of it, which uh, that will prove, I'm sure, to be a, a challenge as well. Um, I'm using inch and a half bits also, but hey, we'll get through it slow and steady. That's all we got to do low and slow
uh, I just wanted to give a quick update here um, share some thoughts on techniques um, my, my little guy there was struggling um, started getting into some uh, felt denser board maybe a bit of moisture in it um, not too sure but I uh, thought maybe my blade was dying but wasn't burning or anything I don't know I'm not a woodworker um, I'm just a casual hobbyist here so I don't know how to troubleshoot this and I didn't want to take the time to google it um, so I went and tried sharpening the blade it helped a little bit um, we've got about 40 of them done already both sides um, and good news too I got the bit I was waiting on um, I was gonna have to use a half inch uh, for some tongue and groove but that would be like a lot of extra work I've got the inch and a half uh, bits that can do it in one swipe rather than multiple anyhow I digress uh, getting back to the dados that we're doing with our inch and a half bit I found that uh, I can struggle for about a half hour to go through one line um, at full three-quarter inch depth if I back that off um, do a half inch works beautifully uh, I can go through it in about two minutes and then I just put the uh, the bit down that extra quarter inch go through it boom uh, no struggling there so <laughs> my last bit I did that for I uh, wish I'd done that right from the get-go but it was going good it was cutting through it decently um, at any rate <laughs> we're going good it's smooth sailing now once I get this done um, because that bit came in I'm going to uh, going to make the front and back walls for that um, hopefully I can get through that today while there's still a little bit of daylight I don't like working in the dark not like I haven't so uh, I might set up some lights here because I'd really I mean if if I uh, if I get through this good I can have this assembled uh, tomorrow so we're basically one day in um, anyhow I'm gonna put this down so I can get some more work done because uh, daylight's going fast it's like three o'clock right now and getting uh, well, you can see where the, the sun is <laughs> love these Canadian winters yeah That's it, all 41 staves. Time for step two. Oh man, my wife's gonna kill me.
Okay, so I started routing out the uh, channel here, but before I go any further, I want to make sure that what I'm doing is going to work. So I'm going to get my base set up. So to do that, um, my diameter of uh, the walls are going to be six feet. So I've got a 36 inch radius. So I've determined, um, well, basically what I've done is made myself a quick jig um, to draw out the circles for my base. I'm using four by four pressure treated because it's going to be sitting on the ground. Um, so I used some uh, drywall angle bead because I had some here. Um, made it really easy to, uh, to do up. Um, so all I've done is screwed a, uh, a wood screw through there right in the center. Um, and he easily finds the center of the uh, the bead and goes right through. And then I drilled a couple holes, one for 36 and three quarter inch because of the 36 inch, uh, or sorry, three quarter inch dados um, on the channels. And that's what the wall is going to sit on. And that's going to sit on the base. So I'd add that three quarter inch. And I went ahead and marked the other one for the three foot radius for the walls. Uh, so I'm going to use this too when it comes time to draw that out. Anyhow. Um, so you basically just square up your, uh, or make your, uh, gauge perpendicular with that hole. Need to grab my pencil, put it in, figure out how much, you know, how thick you want it. I'm going to go about half the, uh, width there. And then you can just draw back and forth, create your arc. Um, my goal, I'm hoping it'll fit on my bandsaw. If not, I'm going to end up running it through my uh, thickness planer and make it fit <laughs> on my bandsaw. Um, hopefully I don't have any struggle with it. I bought it specifically for this project. Um, you know, cheapest money can buy. Only have to make three or four cuts with it uh, for my base. But it is as thick as its max cutting capability. So my fingers are crossed this is going to work. Uh, if not, I'll just have to use two by material and uh, sandwich them together. Anyhow, on with it. I'm going to uh, mark it out, throw it on my chop saw. I'm going to do three of them and uh, yeah, go from there. Catch you later. Too shabby. Well, she's been a slow progress day to day, um, but I got some good stuff done. Day's not over yet, but I might be. <laughs> uh, anyhow, so I swapped out the router bits so I can uh, determine where I'm going to place this sauna as I uh, set up <laughs> my... Uh, <laughs> temporary workspace right where I was gonna put the sauna so I gotta move it anyhow I'm gonna find out where exactly I'm gonna put this because I gotta start putting it all together so I swapped out the uh, router bits so that I can get my bull nose um, so this is gonna be my this is my centerpiece right here um, so I've gone ahead and marked the, uh, the center of each of my uh, 
bases here and I'm going to throw that center down screw it in and then uh, I'll get some more boards ready and start screwing those in then I can drag that to exactly well, to its permanent spot I'm gonna have to probably break down all this um, struggling again with power um, this bit seems to motor through anything so that's not an issue it's that uh, the uh, the other one the uh, cove the cove bit the, uh, the roundy the roundy Audi one anyhow because it makes the innies uh, that one struggles a bit but I mean I still have to drop it down a bit because my edges are um, quite brittle quite thin as you can see so um, I got to make that more a little bit shallower so should be able to motor through it no problem at that point I think so uh, I haven't made my mind up yet um, you know I'm gonna round out the edges on these ones so I can throw them over there and uh, then I'm gonna switch back into the bits there and play around with that um, so once I get that set I can do all the rest of that um, but I'm thinking if I had another router table that would work with the new rigid router that I bought which I'm hating on right now mad hate for that doesn't have an edge guide there's no edge guides to be found uh, they don't sell them in the stores or manual says I got to call them or go to their website to order go to the website it says call there so I had to call them um, website says their uh, two horsepower router is obsolete they don't sell don't make it anymore by the sounds of it um, they don't even list it on their website so I'm a little peeved at that um, they don't even make a router table the guy at the uh, customer service told me to buy the Ryobi one because they make the Ryobi one and it works. They also told me it works with Craftsman. Uh, yeah, I told them, like, I got two router tables and it's not working with it. Either of them. He's like, what do you got? I got, well, a Mastercraft and a Craftsman. He's like, oh, it'll work on a Craftsman. Well, no, I don't think so. Maybe it's too old. He says, no, we've been doing this since the 80s. I'm like, oh, well, this is from the 80s. <laughs> well, probably 90s because we didn't have a garage back in the 80s that we were using. So um, it's my dad's old one. Um, and it don't fit. It don't fit. So I'm a little peeved. Uh, my Craftsman router works on my Mastercraft Universal table. And as you can see, my Mastercraft is working on my craftsman table so rigid Ryobi well it's my first rigid Ryobi uh, you know, they make fine saws bandsaw I got is great loving it um, happy with that purchase anyhow I digress I shouldn't be spending my time talking about tools when I should be building this damn thing I think I'm just gonna go get that rotor table and maybe my life will be a little easier because it is a more powerful one than what I got here but like I said I got to do some tests find out if I even need that one I'm going to try and return it I tossed the box as soon as I got it because I thought I was going to live with it forever now I'm not so sure yeah I gotta get back to work guys here we are guys it's another day it's a beautiful day today I had to get cut short yesterday because we got uh pelted with a freezing rainstorm um, right now everything's really slippery um, well it's a good thing with all the sawdust here it kind of helps out a little bit of traction so it's not going to be treacherous for me um, oof, the sun just came out beautiful um, so I did go out picked up that router table for the rigid because it's crunch time, I gotta get this job done. Um, don't wanna be at this forever. So um, they gave me a good deal because of all my troubles pissing around, um, which was nice. Appreciate that, I was at Home Depot. Um, picked up the Ryobi router table. Um, anyhow, so I think what I gotta do now is I uh, 
I got the, uh, the first bit ready to go. So I'm now ready to throw the, uh, the front and the back, or the you know, front and the back, in uh, to keep this thing up. So I think before I go any further, um, I should router my tongue and groove for the front and back. Uh, draw a circle after I put them together. Swap out one of the routers for the bandsaw so I can cut all the uh, cut the radius um, or cut the cut the arc of the front and the back. Um, and I can attach it, throw that into the grooves there, and then move on with uh, routing the edges of the rest of the staves because I think that's probably the best course of action. I'm going to need that up anyhow to make sure uh, everything is going together smooth. So rather than waiting for that point. Let's get it out of the way now. Uh, it kind of sucks, it's really windy here. But um, a bit of wind with a uh, decent temperature is a lot better than working in 30 below Celsius. And if I wait any longer, that's what it's gonna be and I don't want that. So without further ado, I'm getting to work. I'll check in with you in a while. These are the magical uh, tongue and groove blades. I'm going to put uh, a little guy on my uh, old router and the big guy on my new router. I just got more uh, horsepower, so I figure that'll help. You know, let's get started. Whew. It's getting bloody cold. It's been a bad windy day. So, I've been making. Uh, my tongue and grooves here, but I find I'm experimenting more than anything. I've been shimming the crap out of this, removing shims, trying to find the uh, the perfect mate where the boards line up. Um, I think my biggest issue is I'm dealing with uh, wood that's of various uh, minor thicknesses, so that throws it out. So uh, I think. There's two things I could have done. One, uh, the easiest thing, and I would have been done by now, is just throw all my boards through my thickness planer. Get everything the same thickness, and then I don't have to worry. Uh, make them the thickness of my bit set. And uh, that would have saved me a lot of time. I would have been done. I would have had my front and back built already. But um, sometimes I do the things the hardest. Wait, um, it's getting cold. I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Uh, I gotta run into the city. Got an email uh, from the sauna supply place, um, Blackstone Saunas.ca, I think. Um, put a link below if you're local, Edmonton area, check it out. They got sauna supplies. Uh, they also, if you don't want to go through all the trouble I'm going through to build one, uh, you can buy one ready made. They sell them there. Um, anyway, I got a blast into the city to do that. Um, I'm back to square one here. Man, I, uh, at this point, I haven't figured out which road I am going to go, but uh, I wasted a day doing this. That's the thing with these projects, is you can get down a rabbit hole that you never expected because you've never done this before and nobody's teaching you. Um, just the way it is. That's, that's the life of a maker. <laughs> it's the life of a maker. We're figuring it out as we go along. Um, and uh, some days you win, other days you don't. Um, yeah, I mean, I do got a few done, but wasted a lot of time getting to that point. And I, I stopped. I stopped and I've been pissing around for two hours doing adding the shim, raising it up, trying to find the perfect in-between that, um, anyhow, I won't bore you 
with the details. I'm just going to deal with it and I'll update you to, if I change up my technique. I think I'm just going to roll with it. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll just mark which side my top is and which side my bottom is. Um, that way the bottoms will all be flush with each other. So um, that's all that matters. Um, maybe throw them through a th thickness planer, probably not at this point. When I build my next one, I'll know. Anyhow. Okay, I, uh... <sighs> Fogged up. Alright. So, I got my tongues, uh... I got my tongues all done, 26 of them. Um, gotta do my slots, so I did bring out my, uh, my thickness planer, but decided against it. Um, all I gotta do is make sure I, uh, I flip it around properly so I can mate up the pieces together. Um, and it'll be flush on one side and flush on the other side. Uh, as long as the uh, slightly thicker part goes uh, goes in the same orientation um, all the time, so you know here you can see that. So that's pretty much all I've managed to do today. Um, so each one of these, because it's slightly thicker than an inch and a half, it's got a little bit of veneer. That uh, that'll have to deal with. Not a big deal. And yeah, I'm gonna go get those sauna stones because uh, buddy's shop I think is appointment only, so I gotta go to his place to pick it up. Um, and I don't want him waiting. Anyhow. Good thing about all this wind is that this mess isn't going to be just in my backyard. Here we are. I think we're on day four of this build. Arguably, yesterday was the only day I put in a full day's work. Um, after I picked up my delicious... Uh, where are we? Where are we? There we go. Picked up a box of rocks off some guy's porch. <laughs> <laughs> I paid for these ones though. I, I wasn't getting punked by being a porch pirate stealing a box of rocks. Uh, anyhow, so arguably yesterday was the full day. Um, first and only full day so far of this uh, project of mine. Uh, I got some good progress after I got back from picking the rocks up. I uh, finished doing all the tongue and grooves for the front and back wall, uh, 26 boards. And today I'm going to build the front and back and maybe finish the uh, finish the barrel itself. Um, now I still got to deal with uh, the post processing of the tongue and grooves. If you guys remember uh, a few moments ago, I was talking about how the there's a difference in thickness of the board there. So I got to deal with that. Now there's a few ways to deal with that and a few things to consider when we deal with that. Um, first one is to just clean up that edge. So we can use a flush, uh, flush trim router bit that'll uh, slice that um, little sliver off the whole way. That's the easiest and quickest way. Um, another way is if we're gonna go through the trouble of routing it, we might wanna route all four edges with a chamfer for that kind of classic tongue and groove look if that's something that appeases you. Um, I'm not going to go that way for two things. I like the, the flat, flush, kind of tabletop look. It's pretty cool. Um, it's how barrels look. Um, you know, whether that... Probably most of my decision, too, is the fact that I got to run it through four times on the rotor rather than two. Or I could just do one side, in which case I just got to do two. Um, then that also um, leaves the boards out of out of uh, you know dimension 
because they're still uh, a little bit proud of an inch and a half. Um, so then we've got to be careful orienting our boards. I've got them all oriented in the same way so that they're flush on both sides. Now, if I start flipping them around in that, uh, it adds extra um, quality checking to the project, which I hate. It's bad enough <laughs> making sure it's right side up. I don't like that. Um, the other option to clean it up is to get rid of that size difference. Run it through the thickness planer. Now, I should have done that right from the get-go. Um, it's not that important, but if we deal with that, it doesn't matter the orientation, they'll be flush both ways. Um, and we won't have to do any additional cleanup. But with that said, um, that's more time. It's a lot quicker just to run it through the, the, uh, the flush trim and keep the orientation. Um, than to run it through each board through the planer. So there's that to take into consideration. Both will do the same job. One will adjust the uh, the thickness. And with that said, we gotta remember too that we did a dado in our staves that's an inch and a half. So we already know that we're gonna have to do a bit of extra pounding. Now, I can't see there being a problem pounding it because it's, it's just fractional and wood will compress and it's not hard with like an oak or anything so this stuff is it, it should compress enough um with a bit of a uh, bit of persuasion with a mallet so i'm not worried about that maybe you are so those are all things to take in consideration you want a chamfered have a you know the nice tongue and groove look do you want to just whip it in the router uh that's probably the quickest way um or plane it to size those are three things you got to think about Anyhow, I'm going to go get started doing that and then uh, I'll mark out a couple circles and cut them out on the bandsaw. Still a bit of ways from that, 26 boards i got to run through the router. I've already set up, uh, that's one thing I like to do in the morning before I get started, uh, is set my routers up for the day or to get started anyhow. That way I don't have to piss with them outside, just throw them on my table <laughs> and <laughs> Uh, now that I've got three routers, three router tables, um, this is great because uh, I got my tongue and groove still set up in case I run into problems and I gotta make a new, another one. Um, so that's set up. So I don't have to adjust that. They're already set to height and everything. I don't like to break them apart to move on to the next step until I'm absolutely certain that I don't need to use them anymore. Um, because that's, that's time and accuracy wasted. You might not have it set 100% in the right position. I mean, you should, but that leaves another margin for risk. And they add up, they add up quick. Um, you know, we're, we're, not, uh, we're not building pianos here. But with that said, we do like them. We want them functional. We want them to look, you know, we don't want them to look like garbage um, and we want everything to fit properly so um, you know if you can afford the luxury of having extra ones borrow beg steal them get them from friends extra router tables um, you can set them up and they'll make your life a lot easier um, yeah I'm getting to work again
Okay, I've got first circle for the front marked out. So what I've done is I've measured the main circle, which is a six inch, uh, or sorry, six foot diameter um, circle. And I measured back three quarter inches to account for the dado. That'll give me something to gauge to make sure that um, everything's going into the right depth so I'm not guessing um, when I'm putting the staves on. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to, um, I've already X'd out where I want my, well you can't see it's pretty br bright here, but I've X'd out the uh, sections that I'm going to remove for the door. I'm going to cut those out so I'm going to measure, um, I don't know, maybe a foot up or something um, for the door sill on the top and bottom and then I'll just cut those over with my uh, miter saw. Other than that um, I'm also going to um, put a spacer up on my uh, little circle marker and I'm going to drill another hole because I've got to have three beams going across so I'll have one on the bottom one on the top and one in the middle so we'll do some math get them all spaced evenly so it looks beautiful and then I'll um, copy those dimensions for the back side so it matches um, but I'll just put a two by spacer underneath it um, just to bring it up so that I can mark directly onto the two by sixes that I'm going to use for that and other than that we're doing uh, doing pretty friggin' good here. Um, I did move back um, for the circle so that I have some extra space on the bottom there because um, these boards are longer than six feet. So I'm going to be able to use at least one, maybe two. Maybe, or well, actually, two, maybe four of these pieces I can use um, on the next one so I don't have to use full length pieces. Um, not sure what else I'm going to do with tongue and groove <laughs> two by sixes that I don't use, but there were a few gnarly looking ones that uh, I might be able to get away with not using. So, um, anyhow, I'm going to do that and get to work on the bandsaw shortly. Which is fun because it's new toy. <laughs> well here we are it's another day and the finish line is almost in sight. I did however run out of two and a half inch screws yesterday uh, so I couldn't finish the front. I had a couple more uh, rails to put on to hold everything together. Um, but while I was at it this morning I picked up some uh, spring hinges ornamental T hinges, black epoxy, uh, they're spring loaded. So I think that's gonna be excellent on the, uh, the sauna. Um, but it was good, it was good experience yesterday. I got it uh, technique figured out. Um, my take on it, some advice I can give to you if you're doing this yourself. Um, make sure you use a hinge, uh, sorry, not a hinge, a wedge. Um, you're gonna need that wedge and a, <clears throat> a chisel um, if you don't get that tongue and groove lined up properly you could end up busting a little bit of um, either your tongue or groove inside of the groove which will prevent you from being able to uh, connect it so keep that with you in arm's reach so that you can scrape that out um, break off any breakage and the reason I was getting that is because you got slight warpage um, that uh, if they're not flat, so some of them didn't go in all the way. So what I had to do um, is use a wedge. And so my wedge, I just ended up using um, a really thin wedge um, that I cut off my bandsaw when I was doing the, uh, the cuts there. Um, I cut one off and it worked perfectly. Um, and that wedge also is used, um, once you make your mark, you're gonna need this to pry a little bit 
uh, between the boards to start getting them apart. And then I used that wedge to put in there and give it slight tap with the mallet to split them apart because they were a pain to split apart by hand, um, the tight fitting ones. Um, so that helped and that prevented me from you know gouging anything or breaking anything. Um, pop that wedge in just in the, in the little notch there because obviously uh, you can't get it um, you know between the tongue and the groove you got to go that first half inch there get it in there bang it and it'll it'll split those two apart easily and you just go down the line until it's enough to pop by hand using the uh the leverage um itself um other than that putting them together was a pain um because of the door that i cut out so what i did there is I made it up into two two sections uh, the left so going from the uh, the side of you know the edge of the door to the right and as well or to the left and then to the right um, so that I was able to put that together and then use the middle spanner uh, that uh, rail that holds everything together so I have the left side all together, right side all together, and then the uh, the top and bottom in the middle because they're just little um, you know one foot pieces going across. They didn't want to stick together, um, so they're always moving out of alignment and stuff. So with the left and the right done, all I had to do was line up the middle or the top and the bottom in the middle um, of the doorway there, and put the two pieces together, and bang. Now for the back, you're not going to have that problem. It should be uh, a lot easier to line them up and put them all together because you're dealing with full lengths, no little tiny pieces. Um, and I think it's the the boards themselves and the friction of the whole length that keeps everything together because the smaller pieces now, um, they aren't doing that. So they come out a little easier. So they're always, you're always push them back and if you use your mallet you end up throwing the other stuff out of alignment so it's best just to do it in sections split that front doorway uh, or the door piece into three sections your left your right and then the middle because the middle you got your top and the bottom which aren't connected together so um, it is a challenge but uh, splitting it up into three it'll make it go a lot easier for you anyhow uh, I'm just getting my, uh, my stuff ready here to get outside, I'm gonna put a jacket on real quick and get going. I gotta screw in the rest of the rail. Here, I'll just show you real quick. Oof. So, right there, I do got some snow I gotta deal with. Left my saws outside. I just bagged them up, figured that'd be good enough. I left a lot of equipment outside for numerous days in rain and snow, so they ain't gonna hurt it. I hope not. <laughs> um, anyhow, so as you can see there, uh, I gotta sweep that off, finish the left, and then the top, and then we're good to go. We can move that and get on with the back side. So obviously, we got um, some more to do. I got a lot of routing to do, 50 boards for the canoe joints. So, I mean, that is quite a bit of work there, but uh, it should go relatively fast, I'm thinking. They're pretty pretty straightforward cuts once I get the router set up. Um, so, once I get that backside done, I'll come in. I don't want to split up my routers right now because they're set up for the tongue and groove. Um, if I end up having to make another or two, I'm going to have to uh, obviously use them again to cut some more so I don't want to have to have that downtime of setting it back up again so once I'm done with the tongue and groove um, hopefully should be in a couple hours then break for lunch put the bits on that I'm going to need for the canoe joints and it should be pretty straightforward and smooth sailing at that point I'm hoping I'm hoping the life of a maker is never predictable making is unpredictable if you've never done it before you can read all you want watch all the videos you want but um, it's unpredictable to say the least
Yeah, Murphy's Law. Time to mask up, get the goggles on because uh, I'm on board short. So, my three, uh, three rotor tables out, not a problem. I mean, that's why I didn't pull the bits yet. We got the front done, so that's good. Didn't want to roll it because I'm getting the edge all full of uh, know, iced up or whatever. So I have to be really careful to remove all that snow and ice that's going to crunch up onto there as I'm bringing it over. Let's get on with it, shall we? Okay, so just laying down the rough uh, spacing here. As you can see, I'm using... Uh, Two of the cutoffs from the previous um, assembly so that we can use these pieces. That saved me from having to route a couple boards. Um, and as you can see, I'm also uh, spacing one out that way. That's due to a bad blemish on the underside that I've marked up there. Looks like. Uh, Got hit with a forklift fork. Well, that's not a problem. I tried to catch as much of the garbage as I could, but uh, that one and another one got uh, slipped past me. That one's pretty fine. That'll that'll sand out. A um, couple other things I've got to watch for. Um, is I've got a knot that's come out there and another one right there. So what I'm hoping to do um, is adjust those to the point where um, they'll either be hidden by one of the, the cross beams um, going across one of the rails um, or so far out of the uh, area that we need to use that uh, it can just be cut off and I'll use the rest of it. I mean, as you can see, there's good amounts on some of the uh, areas where we've got uh, room to cut off and play because uh, we're only going six feet and we're using a full stud length. So. I'm going to uh, going to do some creativity there because I'd prefer not to have those uh, those holes there um, on the, uh, the corners there because uh, that's 30 below. We're going to have some cool air coming in there. Not a not a terrible loss because you do need a bit of ventilation, but um, I'd like to be able to control the ventilation. <laughs> If I can, so if I could put that behind uh, a rail, hide it there, that's great. Um, maybe fill in the other side with uh, epoxy or something, um, just to stuff it. Um, again, it's a knot; it's not a big, big deal. Um, but if I can avoid it, I'm going to avoid it. I'm dreamy and beautiful. Sorry about the fogging of the lens there. Nothing I can do about that right now because this camera's been outside for a few hours. It's freaking cold. Let's see if we can... All right, whatever. Um, anyway, I'm just coming in for a break. I'm gonna have to uh, pick up my son from school. Um, figured, I'd take, figured I'd take a moment to come clean about some rookie mistakes I did on here. Um, so, as you can see, I had to, uh, had to route an extra board um, I did make extras okay don't get me wrong I did make extras um, but I was three short in total I was able to reuse a couple pieces from the uh, the front and I had to route another one now the the rookie mistake that I made was not factoring in the tongue and groove uh, in my dimensions for how many boards I needed to route. Each board, you're losing half an inch. So every board, instead of being five and a half inches wide, has been five inches because you're losing half an inch into the other board. So my, uh, 
my math was definitely out um, but I always plan for extra I didn't realize that I'd have less extra uh, it's taken 15 boards each instead of 13 that I figured it would take so um, lost a couple boards there and like I said I did have extras but I was one shy <laughs> Um, hopefully the staves, well, I haven't started routing them, but I got extra two by sixes anyhow. Um, I think I needed, well, my math was off. I grabbed a hundred of them. I have enough. I'm paused. Positive. I have enough. Um, and the reason why I didn't make extras yesterday is because in my head I'm thinking, well, I'm cutting out the doorway, so I'm going to have all this extra material. Um, then it occurred to me that that door I cut out is going to become the door. So, yeah, the hole becomes the door. Uh, don't know why I didn't catch on to that sooner. I'm laying in bed last night, I'm like, ah. Oh, no, I can't use that. I'm like, whatever. I made extras. I'm good anyhow. I was counting my blessings thinking I'm going to have all this extra 2 by 6 tongue and groove. I'm going to make benches with it. I'm going to make... Anyhow, I'm not going to have that much extra. I'll have extra, but not as much or as big as I was thinking. I'm like, oh man, this is awesome. I can build a table out of this. A little workbench. Yeah. Yeah. That's my door. Just things to think about. That's why I'm vlogging this. Not only is my own kind of like diary of what I'm doing that I can refer back to if I ever need to, but to help anybody else out in the same boat because who's kidding who? We love learning new stuff. That's where we're makers. I can't say that enough. We are makers. We're makers. We make shit. We learn shit. We learn from other people. We learn on our own, but we love to learn. Anyhow, okay guys, it is crunch time. We are uh, jumping over my rubber. Okay guys, it is time. We are jumping over router tables. Uh, ow. So, had an excellent day, excellent day yesterday, um, I mean, ran into a few, uh, well, I didn't run into any snags actually, everything went smooth yesterday, um, as I said, I ran short of a piece, so I had to set up three routers to do that, anyhow, I got the back done, and it's looking beautiful. I'm going to uh, show you here. I don't want to go outside just yet. Right there. It's looking gorgeous. Um, got another skiff of snow last night. But that's not a problem. Because uh, everything that I need to work on is pretty much stacked up. Because we are now at the point where I gotta rip out my bandsaw, get it out of there, put my two tables up. I've already set uh, set my bits up, ready to go. Left my uh, miter saw out last night. It's like my bag blew out away from it, so it's a little snowy and icy, maybe. Um, not an issue. We'll sweep that off. Unfortunately, we're, uh, it's going to be a cold day today. We're looking at minus 31 degrees Celsius currently, uh, with wind chill. I think it's about 26 below right now without the wind chill, which means there's a little bit of a wind. I thought yesterday got cold after being out there all day. Oh, it's warmed up 21 degrees below zero. And it should be warming up throughout uh, the weekend. 
Yeah, the Sunday is only gonna be 20 below with the wind chill. Not too bad, but by then I'm hoping to be indoors or at least inside the sauna because I'm all I gotta do now is do the uh, finish up the staves. Gotta route the canoe joint on them and assemble everything. After that, just put the door together. And parts are already, or the pieces are already pre cut. Um, after that, I'm gonna gather up all the extra material I have and I think I will go interior for the, um, the bench and everything. Um, ran into another issue yesterday cutting um, the walls. So if you recall, I'd been prying them apart using wedges. Um, first off, I had a bunch that were warped, which means it was a pain in the ass getting them together. So um, I just used a chisel to remove any mushed up parts and kind of chamfer the edges a little bit just to help them go in. Um, that seemed to help. However, um, they didn't release very easily. I did get them apart, but one part piece um, ended up pinching my bandsaw blade. So I've definitely been going at this the wrong way. Um, it was such a pain in the ass to put them together in the first place um, that it was just not very intelligent to have to pry them apart to cut them and then put them back together. So I just whipped out my uh, my jigsaw and cut them with that. <laughs> and I have to say, uh, I wish I wasn't stubborn about using my bandsaw because I love it. I should have used the right tool for the right job uh, instead of <laughs> ripping apart the whole wall, bringing it over to the bandsaw, then bringing it back and forcing it all together again. I should have just left everything together and cut it with the jigsaw right where I was putting it together. Um, that easily saved me a couple hours worth of work just on this one alone. So in total, uh, you're probably looking at, say you're saving three hours, having to rip it apart, put it back together. Three hours, I would say, easily three to four hours saving it from putting it all together, ripping it all apart, putting it all back together, getting everything all lined up where it was, where it should be in that. Do it once, cut it with a jigsaw. Uh, it's easier on your arms, no more <laughs> excess hammering, prying, um, saves time, saves your body, right tool for the right job, uh, and don't let wanting to use your tool for the sake of using your tool get in the way of uh, your job. So, uh, and I have to say, the alignment looks a lot nicer using the jigsaw because you align it once, nothing gets off kilter or anything. So, live and learn. So on a day like today, it is important to dress warm and take your time. Um, you're gonna have extra material on, you're gonna have probably thicker gloves, and you really wanna make sure that uh, you know where your fingers are at all times. I mean, usually you do, but um, now with the extra padding or that, Pay attention to everything, work slow. You don't want to sweat. Once you start sweating, you start. Once you start sweating, you start getting cold. I'm gonna try and find some good headwear here. I've got. Uh, flannel pajamas underneath my jeans I'm gonna put some coveralls on then my winter jacket over top of it and should be able to work out there all day but I don't have to take a leak good headwear oh, get out of there come on come on I gotta close that all right Let's go. Come. Zoe. Hey. Come. Get out. 
All right, you're on your own. Don't get me wrong, I hate this weather. I don't know why anybody would have built a settlement this part of the world. It's beyond me. But a sauna will make it a little bit more tolerable. Well, just giving you a little update here and uh, getting through it, struggling with my rigid rotor. Um, I don't know if I mentioned before, but a few days ago I had a bit let go in it. Actually, <laughs> in the first uh, five minutes of using the uh, router for the first time, it jumped up and uh, the bit came out and chewed up that. Well, I thought I just didn't have it tight enough, but uh, I've had that damn thing snugged in plenty of times, and this uh, it will not hold on to bits for whatever reason. Um, once I'm done this project, I'm going to return it because just uh, in uh, getting these ones done so far, I've probably had to uh, retighten it. At least a half dozen times. Um, never had that happen to me before on any rotor bits, rotor table, anything. Uh, and this is more more than uh, one bit that's happened on um, different brands too. So something's up with the rigid. I don't know if it's uh, it's not uh, cut out for heavy duty work. And this table too, um, pain in the ass putting the screws in, removing them. Uh, the other tables I can do no problem. These ones, they hide them in behind here. So I gotta come in from the other side. What a pain in the ass. And the table um, moves all the bloody time. All the time. I've had to readjust that fence um, numerous times, I think. Four times now, just in this little project here. Uh, shouldn't have to do that. It, I mean, how tight can I tighten it, really, without breaking it? It's plastic, so I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna test it out. I think I'm returning both of these. I mean, I didn't want to. The price is, price is right. You can't beat the price, but gotta get the work done. Anyhow, I've got something like uh, one, two, three, four, six, seven. No, oh, probably about eight to ten uh, boards left to go. Uh, still about 30 below with the wind chill, 31, something like that. The sun's going down. It's going to be a long, cold night. I might, uh, well, I don't want to finish up in the more tomorrow. I'm going to power through this. Yeah, I just stopped because I blew a break or two. <laughs> Pushing the bits a little too hard. Uh, I don't even know what I have for a breaker out there. But, uh, one thing I wanted to mention uh, when you're doing this is just eyeball your uh, your stock material and decide whether um, you know, something like this you want to have a an any or an Audi um, same with that right there um, on this particular piece I decided that it would be better to route the opposite end for the any and have the outer uh, I don't know, uh, cove, bullnose, whatever you want to call it. I should uh, brush up on my lingo so I know what I'm talking about a bit more. But uh, I figured uh, it would uh, be a lot easier to have the outer radius on that part rather than try and chew through those knots with uh, the other one because that one obviously uh, struggles a bit more. So 
is as you're pulling them out, putting them on your table, uh, determine whether you want to flip that around or not. Um, countless other decisions I've made. You can see, um, you know, just looking at what we got here, you know, you can kind of see why I decided not to try and go into that from the center rather than uh, going the other way. Anyhow, my wife just got back home, so <laughs> I don't have to take off my boots to go reset that breaker. So I am going to get that breaker reset and get back to work. Well, that's it for today. I am spent. I tell you, you get what you pay for when you hire someone else to build these damn things for you. It wouldn't be so bad if this was like the summer. But, uh, we're having fun. Uh, I was hoping, uh, hoping I'd have her, uh, the shell done today. But, uh, I only got halfway done. The routing so tomorrow morning I will pick up where I left off might be a few degrees warmer too so that'll be nice um, but got all the uh, got all that done though with uh, you know a few knots coming out and catching the fence so I'd have to pull it out get a chisel if I can't pop them back in, um, also had to deal with the uh, the fence moving on me a few times, bit coming out. Um, anyhow, I'm done that part. I can move on with my uh, Mastercraft Canadian Tire special uh, for um, that. So that's gonna be nice. <laughs> That one's not going to give me any issues, especially with that bit. Should chew through them pretty quickly tomorrow. So tomorrow I might be, uh, might even have time to build the door and get it on there. Get the heater put in. Not sure, but uh, in a couple of days I will be sitting in there relaxing. Sometimes you hit into knots so it slows down. I did have one uh, real bad one where it just jammed the, uh, the router and popped my breaker, but dealt with that um, so those are just things to consider anyhow all in all we're doing excellent so my camera and me are covered in sawdust here we are folks we're coming into the end zone finally um, just got a bit more routing to do I suspect within two hours I'm gonna be assembling the staves and the walls together and uh, by the end of the day, 
If all goes well, I'll have my door put on, then I can start sanding the interior and putting the heater in, building the benches. So whether I get to that today, benches that is, um, remains to be seen. I'm quite confident that everything is going to go smooth. I might run short of staves if I get some bad cracking um, or splitting happening. Um, I left the routers out obviously so uh, I just gotta get more snow off of them because we got another whiff of snow. Luckily it's been pretty good this year. We haven't had a lot of snow. As we had great weather this year too uh, up until finally now we're getting some normalized weather in the 20 blowish, 30 blowish. That's kind of normal this time of year. Um, shit, we've <laughs> the other day it was in the pluses. <laughs> you seen when I started out? <laughs> it was a nice warm day. Um, anyhow, is what it is. We're gonna get started right away, um, and I'm excited. Oh yeah, we're uh. Tearing down shop because we're all done. There is a chance, as I said, that I'm gonna have to reset up the routers, uh, the router tables. Uh, if, if we have some uh, failures of our staves, but uh, I'm gonna take that chance because, as I mentioned before, kind of set myself up with uh, not much room to work with, so. I can I'm breaking down my portable work table here, which is good because I can get to a wrench that I lost down it. It's one of the downfalls of using pallets for work tables. If you drop something down a crack, you're not getting it till uh, you rip everything apart. Anyhow, I'm gonna break this down, get it out of the way, break for lunch, and. Uh, Start putting the, uh, the walls up in the staves. Stay tuned. Yeah, I can handle the cold, but the cold and the sawdust absolutely hate. I'm gonna wake up with crusted sawdust in the morning. I hate that feeling. Um, a lot of routing, a lot of sawdust. Worst part about this is I'm going to be dealing with sawdust till probably the summer, bringing it in and out of the house every time I go in and out, till that grass starts growing and some moisture comes in and it can start uh, breaking down and, and getting mowed with the lawnmower. Um, it's going to be nothing but sawdust. I've dealt with this before in a few projects. I'll be tracking that in and out of the house for months. And uh, we plan on using the sauna probably every day, so we are just going to have to learn to deal with it, live with it, embrace it. Well, it's coming along excellent. Behold. So, hindsight always comes and bites us in the ass. And I know I mentioned it before about the, uh, the thickness of this uh, stub material. I should have planed the damn stuff because it's a pain getting, uh, getting the bottom in. You know, banging singles in. Uh, isn't too bad, but I did come across a few that are really thick. That uh, oh, well, really had to force in, and uh, some of it went. Depending on you know what's on the edge of the uh, you know the grain or whatever, whether it goes in easy or not, I, I guess. Um, we're putting the walls in there like you can still see there's a huge gap right at the bottom where she didn't want to go in uh, my base well probably not on level ground either which i thought it was but a lot of that was ice and stuff so but it's coming together um starting off it's a real pain um 
especially with the uh, the thickness of the uh, boards not going right into the dados um, so having a couple extra sets of hands would probably help um, and my wife and uh, son out here helping me for a bit um, just to get started um, still had to send them away because it wasn't working eventually I grabbed a rasp or a, one of these guys here just to make a slight chamfer I don't think it really helped I think it was just a matter of brute forcing it um, the worst part is you're on the ground you got really no um, area to swing that hammer oh. Uh, sorry, autofocus was off. You know, we really got nowhere to swing that hammer. Uh, but once you get up a few staves, it comes together pretty quickly. Um, probably took me two hours to get the first couple boards in. And now, like, probably half hour later, maybe more. Time might be going fast, just because it's going smooth. I don't know. But uh, it's going good. I've got halfway done. Maybe a little bit more, so fingers crossed I've got enough staves and then it just occurred to me too anyhow that once we get up to the uh, the top, there's a good chance that uh, I might have to rip one of these boards and uh, make it a different size. In fact, I was supposed to route two edges on that because I'm going up with the roundeds up top and my thoughts on that are um, you know there's gonna be loose you know the gaps aren't gonna be sealed so I kind of want the water to wick down it instead of into it it'll uh, it'll last longer that way and you'll have less water getting inside I'm thinking um, yeah that might have actually been easier doing it the other way, where I can put the nose in and tilt it in, but I guess it's a trade-off one way or the other. I know I've seen a lot of people putting uh, um, tar paper on here and putting shingles on, um, or wraps, that sort of stuff. I'm not going to go that route at this point. I guess I won't know until I've used it, find out, uh, you know... <laughs> Do I need to put a bigger heater in it? I don't know. We'll find out in a few days though. I'm um, hoping to have this, uh, the barrel part assembled by the end of the day. I mean, I'm sure I got another hour, maybe a little bit more to go and then uh, should be good. Yeah. Well, I made some excellent progress Sunday night. Yesterday I decided to take the day off the cold was just getting to me and it was really windy. I said, screw that. Um, still just as cold today, but makes a huge uh, world of difference on the body to take a day off. So I'm gonna get out there. Um, I wanna start putting the benches on now that, you know, while I still got the top opened, um, I could at least, uh, I can see what I'm doing without having to bring in extra light for now. So I'm gonna get those benches in uh, before I do that, though, um, all the mill stamps, um, I'm going to sand off, give them a quick sand, uh, especially while I got it open still, so it's not going to be as much dust inside to clean up, um, so give it a quick sand, get the benches in there, I picked up some cedar for the benches and for the heater guard, um, it'll be nice contrasting wood to the, uh, the stud wood there. Did cost a little bit more, a little extra, but my wife is worth it. Um, she wanted a bit of cedar in there, so I said, okay. She convinced me. She told me. Anyhow, um, so I'm going to sand that. And I get the benches in. Still haven't thought about the bench height. Wanted around the two foot height. Um, so you get, uh, you know, closer to the middle, um, you got more bench space. So I need to decide what the optimal bench width is in there and go from there. Um, can't make it too high because people can't get on it without a stool then. So while I'm sanding, I'll be thinking, I'll be figuring that out in my head where I want to put the benches. Anyhow, I'll check in with you after. So 
So to do the sanding, I just grab one of these cordless Ryobis. Um, bought my wife an electric lawnmower. Finally said goodbye to gasoline. Best decision we've ever made. Did have to pick up a couple extra batteries because we got two large lawns. Um, but this thing works with that uh, Ryobi One uh, battery system. So um, I might have to switch away from Dewalt as my batteries for those die. Goodbye. Hello, Ryobi. They make great, great stuff. I'm enjoying their stuff for the most part. So uh, it's probably a good decision. Okay, so did some sanding as you can see. Got no uh, none of the uh, the mill markings left. Use that uh, Ryobi ram random orbital sander. I've cut my uh, my bench wood out. Those are two by four uh, cedars decking uh, boards. And uh, going to be dropping them down to boat this site here. Well, right about there. I'll get us around the uh, 24 inch mark. So I'm going to do that. Finish roof in this. Let's actually make a nice little bunkhouse, too, eh? Make barrel bunk houses for the kids. <laughs> At any rate, I think if I were actually to do that, I would probably probably do tongue and groove and go straight up, then make my curve. So tongue and groove to the halfway point, then get started on the uh, the canoe joint there. That would make an awesome bunk house. Absolutely. Um, anyhow, I gotta go pick up my son from school now, so I'll uh, reconvene shortly. I will have to do something about the, uh, yeah, I went with those uh, three four by fours, clearly not enough. And I'm probably, I mean, I'm on ice, so, uh, yeah. my <laughs> kneeling uh, pad there while I was putting in those bottom staves. At any rate, uh, yeah, like I said, she's a little unstable. So I'm just going to chalk the sides of it when it, uh, when it... So I'm just going to chalk the sides of it when it comes down to it. Chalks on either side. Um, should stabilize that real good. Um, but yeah, I, I pecked at the ground <laughs> with a nice uh, scraper as much as I could. Works great uh, on concrete, not so much on grass. So that's what you get for trying to do this in a Canadian January. <laughs> yeah, it's not looking too bad at all. Figured we're further enough along in the uh, build process that I can wire up this 110 heater. Um, now I did put in um, three conductor wire just in case this uh, heater's not powerful enough. Now you gotta understand this is the smallest usable sauna heater you can find out there. It's 110 volts. It's meant for a small room. Now this is going to be a small room, especially because it's a barrel. Um, on the chance that this isn't going to be powerful enough, like we got to you know run it for three hours before it gets hot enough, um, I decided to use three conductor cable. Um, that way I can wire it straight into my circuit panel, put it on a 220 volt uh, circuit, without having to re-run a wire. So I'm kind of thinking ahead. Um, so I can just disconnect it, 
throw the new one in there if we have to buy a new one and it'll be a quick transition uh, anyhow this one wires up pretty easily um, I just used a step drill here to drill out the uh, the plastic porch portion there there is a plastic clamp in here so I don't know how good that's gonna be um, I've always used metal ones but it came with it so I'm using it so I've wired the, uh, the live the neutral and the ground we are good to go so that's all there is to this this one and if you had the 220 volt um, obviously you would wire up an extra live wire the red one typically um, with that said I do recommend you do some googling find out how to do this or um, or hire yourself an electrician um, you're dealing with electricity a little bit of water um, so err on the side of caution if you aren't 100% comfortable don't do it don't force yourself um, you know this isn't a toy here you're gonna have potentially kids friends family and yourself in here so if you're not comfortable doing this hire someone get a friend that knows electric do that I don't know um, just be safe out there um, read all the documentation if you can't understand how to wire it don't take any chances um, you know this isn't like wiring a power supply for a toy you know <laughs> um, this is gonna come in contact with your body potentially water that sort of thing I'm told these don't go on a GC uh, ground control fault interrupt ground circuit fault interrupter GFCI GCFI uh, this just goes straight in so I just did some measurements here and figuring out where exactly I'm gonna mount this one so this one uh, manufacturer recommends 15 inches above the floor level is the minimum height that you can have this so I'm going the minimum and my benches will be just by the top of the uh, heater my benches are going to be right around that position there for optimal heating in your sauna so anyhow now that's done daylight's fading quick i'm going to pop outside see if i can cut some more wood i want to get those benches installed um this is the end zone <laughs> we're so close so close Thanks for following along too. Uh, if you've waited this long in this video here, it means you're probably thinking of doing this yourself. So if you have any comments, questions, whatever, uh, leave them down below for me. I do answer you guys all the time. Thanks for watching anyhow. Um, but this isn't the end of the video, so stay tuned. It's giving you another quick update here. This guy right here, lifesaver. You're thinking to yourself, it's just a jigsaw. I've had this for years, and I thought the same thing. It's just a bloody jigsaw, but no, no, check this out. Chiggity, check this out. I don't know how many other out there have this feature. It saved my butt today. I was having issues trying to get a stave on, and my wall at one point was just off, lined up, and there's a hump where they two, the two meet up. Well, couldn't get this in without removing any staves, but check this out. Boom. Removes, but not only that, I can put it into a scroll saw mode. Check this out. Boom. So instead of having to go out like that, I was able to go out like this. Carve off that little tip. Man, I love this. I used to hate this. I don't know why, I just never really liked it. But uh, today, I fell in love with it. Absolutely love it. Recommend it. This is a Canadian tire. It's the maximum. I don't even think they sell it anymore. I think it's out of, uh, out of production. I'm sure uh, it's probably just a knockoff, you know, Chinese company that makes them all for everybody. So you might be able to find something similar. Uh, it's got a nice light. It's got like a blower in it so that you don't get dust in your face. If you can find one, get it I love it hopefully there's something in America that you guys can use that's just like it all right so yesterday I uh, put the rest of the ceiling on save for the last 
hopefully just two pieces. If it's more than two pieces, I'm going to have to cut all three to make them fit. Um, or get some 2x8 uh, material and do it that way. Um, a little bit warmer today, it's only about 15 below. Uh, just came out quickly before I throw my jacket on. Um, but uh, I'm liking it. I can, I can stand up in here so far, which is cool. Seems pretty stable. Um, which is nice. Uh, so today I'm going to mount the uh, benches. I cut them out yesterday. Like I said, it went with cedar. Really hard to tell that it's cedar, but you will when I guess when I get it sanded maybe. But um, I'm gonna drop that down to about here. Heater will come up. Well, no, about bottom of the heater will be about here. Top will be around here. So the benches will be. Ah, I don't know. So cut the benches to size. So now all I need to do is cut a four pieces to uh, tack this rail, another rail here so that I can have uh, stable on the bottom there and I'll mount the, mount the heater that I wired up yesterday today and put the door in as well and if everything goes good today I'm gonna have it complete and I'll be using it this evening. And I'm looking forward to that. Definitely looking forward to that. Anyhow, that ain't gonna happen if I stay here talking to you guys. Um, so, my only concern at this point, like I was saying, is the, uh, the last two pieces there. They seem really close to being two and a bit and not just two. Um, I was worried before about having not enough staves, but I, uh, I overestimated, so I have plenty, um, plenty of spares. So that's not a problem. Uh, so I got enough material to, uh, to deal with this, whether I go for three small ones or two will fit fingers are crossed I still have to cut though I gotta cut out uh, the notch on one of these to marry them together um, I wasn't hoping to whip out my table saw because it's buried in my shed but uh, the door is the only thing that really kind of uh, vexes me what am I gonna do with the door because um, well, I've got a notch here, half inch notch here, and a half inch recess right there. Do I fill that in with a strip and cut this one off? And I gotta extend my door, which I've gotta do that anyhow. I'm just looking here too. Probably gonna undo those screws and bang this up a little bit there. Because it looks like I can get higher, so I'm gonna do that. Definitely do that. Um, and other than that, I'll do that once I get the roof put in. So I don't want to knock that out once I get the last two staves. Anyhow, I'm going to get started on those two staves. Once I do that, I'm going to come in and uh, hang the benches up. And then, step by step from there. Well, more setbacks. Um, wasn't able to get that on because had it perfect up here, but at the back side, huge gap, which tells me that these staves aren't in uh, evenly. So, um, also, I uh, leveled that piece out, bang, leveled that piece down, banged it. Here, however, ended up oh, that one broke the stave right on the bottom. Um, so, what I'm gonna have to do 
is probably going to have to roll this over a bit. So I'm going to have to disconnect it from the, uh, the blocks, the stands on the bottom, roll it over enough so I can replace that stave. And I've also, because of that gap up top, um, I'm going to have to pull off the staves and put them back on, um, being mindful of the uh, alignment, because obviously the alignment's off, so that's another day's work, is what it is. Um, probably would have been solved if I took my time on the base. Um, you know, the three middle ones were perfect and they were screwed to the base. Um, getting the other ones on is where the alignment issue would have popped up from. So, um, I wasn't able to really hammer those ones in. So I'm thinking on one side, didn't get it in properly and didn't notice or maybe didn't care not quite sure I was just getting started uh, so at any rate not the end of the world it's round it's relatively solid so if I roll it fix that um, you know tear off a whole bunch on that side put them in perfectly and I'll be able to roll it back and uh, from that point on, those staves go on really fast. So, the one side looks pretty good. I'm gonna go over it. If I have to roll it back and forth to get it perfect, I'm gonna do that at this point. Um, what else are you gonna do, right? You're this far into it. <laughs> you want it to work. You don't want it to be a mishmash. Um, so, a little bit of extra work. Could have been saved. Well, some of this has to do with thickness of the wood too um, so I'm gonna have to deal with that as well well we had a break in the weather it's been really nasty past couple days so taking time off anyhow so there's the board I broke so had done to do some screws had a few uh, screws that were screwed in before hand um, before I put the, uh, the walls in so they were a challenge to get out I had to drill a couple of them anyhow so I rolled the sauna over so I could uh, redo the bottom ones a lot nicer um, also for uh, the tight fitting ones so I don't have to hack away to make the really nasty ones fit I'm just uh, I got my Ryobi chop saw here. I just set up a uh, three-quarter inch stop here, and then got a little spacer to move the board out just a little bit so that I can uh, cut exactly three-quarter inch. So I just take a blade weight width off, and then those staves fit in perfectly. Uh, so that's how I'm dealing with this. This has been quite the process, taking a lot longer than I expected. Of course, the weather isn't being nice to me. Uh, at least today it's only, only 25 below with the wind chill. Maybe not even, doesn't even feel like that. Um, and there's, well, right now there's no snow or no wind, so it's rather pleasant to be out here. Uh, anyhow, so I'm gonna get these done. I'm gonna work my way up uh, top getting all the joins nice and tight uh, taking my time and uh, hopefully solve the issues I had with the uh, alignment at the very top so that's what I will be doing today any kind of luck I'll have the shell done completely if the shells done completely I'll work till past dark and get this thing done today. And so far, 
uh, things are going really good, making good progress, so things are looking up. I apologize if the weather were better, I'd just leave this camera out there indefinitely and film everything and give you a nice uh, time lapse so you can see the progress how it went, but we did good yesterday. I didn't get the whole thing built, but I got the whole thing shelled up. We got an equal gap front and back. I am happy. Um, what I got to do now is this is just slightly wider than a full piece. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to um, slice off a, a nose of one and slice off a nose of another and marry the two together. Um, I'll just obviously have to use just a little bit on the side. I'm going to take my time, um, slice it up, which is good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this about right here, and then I'm going to rip one of those on the table saw as well. And uh, once I get a right fit, I'll screw them together, and then put it all together. And uh, once that's done, I'll go put up my benches. Second time around it went a lot easier by taking that little blade width off wherever I needed it to when the uh, uh, material was thicker than an inch and a half. Uh, everything just laid in beautifully. There was no hammering. Um, I'm sure I'll build another one of these in the future. And when I do, um, I'll make sure 100% that... Uh, I mill, uh, or I uh, plane all my boards to a proper thickness, that way I don't have, uh, don't have this problem ever again. It'll go together a lot nicer. Um, anyhow, I'll talk about all my mistakes later. I'll do, a, <laughs> I'll do a summary of my mistakes during this project. And it dry fits beautifully. So, I ripped out... Uh, Two boards as I said I would. Now I'm going to screw them together so I get the perfect size board. Um, I did have to slice a thin strip off it. My first attempt, uh, it's about a quarter inch too thick. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I sliced it off to size. Loosened up a few of these boards here and uh, did the dry fit. She goes in nicely, so I am going to screw them together. Uh, and then I'm going to lift it up there and put it into its final position, and that will complete the outer shell of our barrel sauna. And I can put the benches on tonight. I will be getting naked in my sauna. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe not. At these. Behold, let's go inside, have a look. Not too shabby.
shell is complete. In other words, we have a barrel, which is what we set out to do. Partially what we set out to do. Um, now let's find a place to sit. To level to make sure that we're level across that way as well as uh, front to back before we put our uh, benches in because we want to make sure uh, it's going to feel normal. You know, she's slightly off level um, so at this point we just got to make sure that we're uh, not noticeably so we just got to make sure that um, we're symmetrical now so if you look at it it doesn't look awkward. So what I've done once I've confirmed that we're symmetrical, measured down here, I'm going to put a uh, 2x4 cedar here for things to sit on. And I decided I'll just uh, use these rails here to assemble it as a little bit of a holding jig. I'm pre-drilling holes here, uh, pilot holes, because a little worried that that might split. Um, I'm also going to countersink. The hole. So I just came back in from grabbing a countersink bit. I'm going to use that instead for my pilots. Um, <clears throat> that way we got no screw heads um, protruding out of there that you can uh, burn yourself on. Or you know they look they don't look as good either. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. two benches built. Um, I brought the first one into the house to put on the floor so I can use some weight. Um, some of the boards are a bit warped. Man, when you walk in there now that it's starting to thaw out, it smells real good, really strong cedar smell. I'm gonna love this. I think, uh, I think it was the right choice. My wife pushed me to went with cedar benches because I do like the smell. Um, don't like the expense. <laughs> But uh, it's a good trade-off going with the, the pine walls, cedar benches. Um, and yeah, as I was saying, they're a little bit warped uh, at the end there. So you could have done a couple things. Because I'm doing it in here, I, I have no room to get any clamps in. Um, so I uh, attack it down, finish the build, and then bring it in to the kitchen and... Uh, those ones that aren't sitting flush. Um, put some weight on it, back the screws out, back them right in as soon as that board uh, sits back down. Um, so right now when you put your weight on it, the screw's holding it in place so it's not gonna come down. So that's why you gotta put the weight on it, back the screw out, it'll sit flush again, it'll sit down with your weight on it, you screw it back in and then it's gonna solidify it right there. Um, same thing uh, in the middle. In the middle, uh, on the, the first one, I had a real big kind of uh, know, bow, if you want to call it, or crowning bow, whatever. Um, so what I had to do was take it in um, using a chisel from down below. I would put it up and pry that into, into place because uh, I didn't want to mar the top up with the chisel because you will have some indentation as you pry that. Um, so I just push that into place, using my weight to keep it uh, down, put the screws in, boom. Anyhow, I'm gonna take this in, do that, and get those benches mounted. Um, gonna have to cook supper soon, so I don't know if I'll be finishing this project today, but after this, um, I want to mount them, I'll just say right now, I'm gonna put a, uh, just because they're already assembled that I didn't in assemble them in situ here. So I'm gonna take a two by four, two by six, I got lots of scraps. I'm gonna put that along here as a rail to slide the bench on for attaching onto there. So once I get it on there, I'm gonna screw into the sides there. Um, that'll secure that and then I'll remove this. This is just gonna be so I don't have to have two or three people helping me and holding it while I screw it in. I'm used to working alone by myself doing these projects, so I've come up with a lot of uh, 
a lot of creative methods of uh, working by myself. So, anyhow, onward. <laughs> well, <laughs> I tested out the uh, I tested out the bench height. Height's perfect. Ah. Expecting that. Uh, yeah. You know he's stopping now? <laughs> sure. Well, my wife put a light in here just to test it out how it's gonna be like at night. Or well, actually, it won't be night, but when we're in here. Um, it's got a battery in there, so hopefully it doesn't explode from the heat. I'm not too sure. We'll find out, I guess. Um, anyhow, um, yeah, so I got the benches built, like I said. Um, they're put in. where They're at a level that I like. Um, I might not mount them permanently just yet. Maybe I will confirm that the, uh, the heat is right and it's not too cold down below. So um, might move the benches down. I don't know. I'm gonna get the, um, the door on tomorrow, get the heater installed tomorrow and put the uh, support here for the benches tomorrow and we'll be using it tomorrow regardless. Yeah. Beautiful light. Oh, uh, temperature really dropped. Anyhow, it's uh, going to be lovely. I can't wait. Well, I'm headed outside to build a door and secure those benches that I put in there. Um, other than that, I gotta put the sauna on the wall and install a 25 amp circuit breaker down on my circuit panel. However, that's a bit of an ugly duckling. Hard to find. I get 30s, get 20s, 15s, 25s, a little hard to find. Order one off Amazon. I imagine they're only hard if you don't go to an electrical supply place, supply store. I suppose if I went down to like a, you know, your Home Depot or your Rona or Lowe's, wherever you, you get your, your, your hardware center, um, 25 amps, probably not that common. So they don't stock it or special or item. Um, electrical supply places should have them in stock. So, rather than save me a trip to the city, I just ordered one on Amazon. I'll be here in a couple days. Few more days waiting but that'll give me time to put the door on um, I can still wire uh, fish the wire through my wall into my basement I'm not gonna piss around uh, putting 25 amps through a electrical outlet so I'm gearing up to finalize things here um, so there's the bench height um, I mentioned before I don't like this right here uh, it's gonna be a challenge to do anything about that so here is the question of what to do with the board it's tongue and groove on both sides so I've got a tongue here and a groove here and the boards that I took out of there are for my door and they have a matching tongue and groove so to clean it up what I think I might do is rip off well, maybe three quarter inch off each end. So I'll lose an inch and a half of doorway uh, width, but that'll clean up the 
both sides of the door. And that'll give me, you know, maybe a quarter inch of play from the, uh, the two blade widths I'm ripping out of the material. But that'll leave me with, theoretically, uh, a door that'll fit in there and open no problem. As well, it'll leave me with smooth edges without having to do anything else. I'm not sure if that's the route to go or if I should cut the tongue out. Um, but then that's going to leave me short when I go to put my door in because it'll be a tongue or half an inch uh, shy of filling up that space then because of the tongue and groove. So I either got a Cut a new board, put a tongue and groove on it to fix that up. So, decisions, decisions. I've got to come up with a decision though, which I haven't figured out yet, but I will. I'll figure that out. I think I'm going to rip the ends off the board. That'll keep flush on the door. I'll put those two pieces to fill in the tongue and the groove on there. And we'll see how that works. That's what I'm going to do. Two cuts on my table saw I should uh, put a quick answer to this dilemma so I'll do that and see how it works out bit of veneer should be a matter of uh, probably should have used some glue but uh, whatever it comes out I know how to fix it right yeah so now finish putting the door together okay I got the uh, tongue and groove all put together for the door did a quick rough fit fits perfectly um, once I get the cross beams on I'm gonna whip that through either the table saw or bring it over to my chop saw and uh, make that flush I'm gonna sand it too while it's down because um, you know everything's secure other than a door that whips back and forth so I figure it'd be easier to sand that while it's off than when uh, it's hung so I'm gonna do that real quick and start uh, turn it into a door all right got the door assembled um, sanded as well so we got all the the mill markings off and I'm working on a handle now so I took a scrap piece of cedar and uh, did a couple 45s I did a well, rough marking here um, a little combo square um, did some rough markings there did a quick 45 there and there chopped it off here on my uh, miter saw and sanded the edges a little bit roughly now I'm gonna take this to my band saw and cut the inside out just got to set that up um, then uh, 
find a way to attach the handle I'll probably go in it with uh, well, I'll figure it out I got some time probably go in through the opposite end and drill into it um, and use some three inch screws or something so at this point uh, also I did some more sanding around here uh, it's tight up here um, I don't think at this point I am gonna bother cutting any of the door off and obviously we're dealing with stud wood and we know how straight and true and flush everything is there so uh, it is sitting tight up in one corner uh, very little bit so I think uh, I'll hang the door uh, as tight to the top as possible and sand any place that I need to sand it and it should work beautifully um, so now I'm gonna set that bandsaw up uh, whip this through it and uh, finish it off with my sander to get everything mm, love that smell nice and rounded uh, you know uh, I'll probably come back tomorrow to put the hinges on and attach the door handle I got to finish screwing in the uh, the cross beams as well um, so still got a bit of work to do anyhow um, so I'll show you all that momentarily Well, that was hardly worth bringing the uh, the bands. Did I say scroll saw before? I meant to say band saw. Um, hardly worth bringing that out for. And yeah, there's the rough uh, handle. Just got to uh, soften the edges to make it nice to grip. Oh man, I wish you could smell that. I wish you could smell that. I know it's been a long time. A lot of <laughs> uh, it's been a long time since a lot of you guys have been in a sauna myself included over a year now um, and my wife used to go every day religiously so uh, this is for her really but um, steam rooms and saunas she, that's what she lives for so uh, this is gonna be super special for her uh, Anyhow, I'm going to so soften these edges to make it a nice handle for her. Well, we're getting closer. I put the, uh, the heater in today. I uh, ran the wire into the house. haven't put the breaker on yet. Um, I'm going to fill up the heater with the rocks. Then I'm going to wire that breaker. Um, got the bench is in. The uh, supports are all done. The doors in hinges uh, so I'm gonna put the rocks in and well tomorrow I'll uh, I'm gonna fire it up uh, I still gotta put the uh, kind of skirting around that so I'll worry about that later you know my rocks here I have to uh, find a way to slide them all in Okay, got started bright and early today. Last night I finished doing the benches. My son and I, Weston, ran the uh, the wire to the house yesterday. Let me give you a quick. Right there. And this morning, before my wife started work, because she works from home, I cut power to the house, installed a 20 amp breaker for this. Might have to go back and do the 25 amp. We'll find out. But it's the moment of truth. I want to hold the door open there so we got light. Oh, and last night, while well, freezing my butt off, I installed the sauna rocks. Oh yeah, so, timer. Ooh, I hear things going. Let's turn up the heat. Ooh. Okay, well, there's, uh, I can hear it working. I hear it buzzing. 
There's no sense uh, hanging around while this warms up. Let's come back. Uh, but we'll come back in about 20 minutes and see how we're doing. I still got a bit of work to do. I got to uh, put the uh, uh, snowing again. Man, we don't get any breaks around here. Well, we will shoot. We will soon. We will get a break as long as it heats up enough. We're on the the borderline of. Uh, being underpowered for the heater so um, the next step from here is 240 volt so I ran the wire that'll support it so that I don't have to rewire it um, when it comes time didn't want to do that I put a service loop down there as well so if I have to pull a bit more wire back uh, to work on it I can do that um, and we'll know right away we're getting into sub 30 temperature so ideally it'd be nice to use this all the time no matter what temperature so um, I want to make sure we've got enough power so I got the wire so I don't have to do anything other than pull the old one off throw the new one on um, and put a new breaker in the panel that's it anyhow let's check it out in about 20 minutes see what we're doing all right doing a proof of concept test right now. It's 23 degrees Celsius below zero. I'm gonna see how it feels walking to this damn thing. I'm hoping it's a little warmer when I get there so I can warm up for a minute. Oh yeah, it's cold. Feel any heat from outside of course that's to be expected let's see what inside brings us let's start to warm up not much heat yet only been a few minutes I guess but it is getting hot, that's the main thing. So we'll let that actually. Let's go ahead and reset the timer on that. Because why not? A little extra time to get her. Nice and hot ain't gonna hurt. I do see a lot of daylight in there, so there's a lot of cold air coming in. We'll find out what happens. Give her some time. I might be <laughs> severely disappointed, but we'll find out. Well, that's it. The sauna build is complete. We got a. Well, that's it. The sauna build is complete and just in time because we got this polar vortex of like. Minus 30 degree weather coming in, probably colder. Uh, so, time to start enjoying the sauna. Uh, with that said, still gotta clean up. <laughs> um, had to bring all the uh, equipment in, three routers, tables, and that. Brought them inside, getting them cleaned up, thawed out, because some of them have spent a few nights outside, uh, especially my miter saw and table saw. I gotta go back into my shed, but with that said, I wanna get all the snow off them and uh, then take them out. It'll still get condensation on it, but uh, it won't be as bad as being covered in snow and frost. So I'm gonna let them sit overnight, dry out, get all the snow melted, uh, give them a good vacuum, get all the sawdust out of it and everything, and then. Uh, Brave the cold weather tomorrow to put everything away. Well, here we are. So, we have been enjoying the sauna a little bit, but it is not sauna hot. That little 110 heater just isn't cutting it. Not for building this size. So, new one just arrived today. 
This one's a two kilowatt. Here, I'll show you the difference in size. Little guy, big guy. So, little guy, big guy. So, the new one should get this feeling like a sauna and not like a comfortable heated room. So, It's amazing in here. I don't know if you guys realize this, but we are going through a polar vortex right now. Temperature outside right now is minus, I think, 43 degrees Celsius um, with the wind chill. It's bloody cold out there, and it's freaking hot in here. It's sauna hot. Um, nice dry air. Um, heater works great. This new one, the six kilowatt. Um, you guys are planning on building something this size, uh, go for the 6 kilowatt, 240 volt. Um, there's no way around it. The 110, uh, maybe half, yeah, well, 110 volt, uh, 2 kilowatt, that'll be fine for something half this size. Uh, so perhaps if you compartmentalized it, um, you know, put a change room in one side. Um, as you see, lots of daylight in here coming in. I can I can see clearly in here um, with the amount of uh, sun coming through. Huge gaps in here. Um, and like I said, it's 43 degrees Celsius below uh, <laughs> outdoors. Um, so it's bloody cold. And that's not an issue at all in here. Um, it's just amazing. Uh, I mean, my, my family and I, we're going to get a lot of use out of this. Um, this is one of, I think, the best gifts I can give to my family, especially. I, I wish I did this a year ago um, when we had talked about it, when everything shut down. And I regret not having built one of these um, sooner. So, anyhow, 